Thank you, Dana. Uh, I would like to thank Sages and uh, Dana Sands, as well as the co-chairs, for asking me to, uh, to give my uh, talk on this topic today. Uh, before uh, Dana reached out to me on this topic, I actually haven't, um, wasn't really thinking, paying attention too much to suture material as one of the potential things that I could blame when I got an anastomotic leak. Uh, <laughs> most of us, I think, um, are used to using a particular suture material, which has been um, ingrained into us um, as a result of being passed from generation to generation, or uh, a particular material that I think we find comfortable using, and we don't usually tend to change this. Now, is there any science to the kind of suture material uh, we, we use um, is, of course, something that um, is the topic of, uh, of, of what I'm going to be discussing today. Uh, we know that anastomotic leaks are the most dreaded complications. There is a very high morbidity and mortality associated with the condition. And the path pathophysiology of a leak itself is uh, sort of unclear. We do not know whether it's a structural problem or whether it is a functional problem or a technique related or indeed, more recently, issues about the microbiome as a cause for this uh, have been presented. The healing of leaks is also not extremely clear. In general, these are the various factors that we tend to think are associated with uh, leaks, patient factors, operative factors, as you can see on the slide. And of course, disease-related conditions such as inflammatory bowel disease, as, a, as opposed to cancer, may be associated with a higher leak rate. Uh, more recently, uh, we've become more aware that uh, perhaps perioperative protocols also influence this a combined uh, bowel preparation with me mechanical preparation plus oral antibiotics has recently been shown to significantly reduce leak rates. And of course, this also brings into question whether um, altering the uh, microbiome within the colon or within the bowel prior to surgery may influence this. Uh, we do not routinely think of suture material because uh, I think in general, we tend to use materials that we're comfortable with or we've been told to use um, in the operating room. When looking at anastomotic healing, the, the three things that we should think about or may be important when we consider the type of suture material that we use includes as to whether which layer is most important, uh, whether healing of the gastrointestinal tract differs from the skin, and uh, what is the role of bacteria in pathogenesis. Um, all the layers of the bowel wall seem to be important. Uh, we are all well aware of uh, the Lamberting sutures, which consists of the seromuscular layers described in the 18, 1800s. Zerny uh, subsequently described a full thickness uh, healing, uh, suturing of, of bowel wall. And Halsted in 1887 pretty much uh, throwed light on the fact that the submucosa was the most important part of the bowel wall and hence needs to be used. We're also all aware that uh, with nowadays with the advent of the staplers, which are almost ubiquitous, which pretty much uh, incorporate the entire bowel wall, we know that the healing from the stapling is almost comparable to hands-on anastomosis in more instances. Thus, it seems that all the layers of the bowel wall are important in terms of healing. Uh, the mucosa produces mucus, which acts um, as a layer that prevents uh, leaks in the early part of uh, healing. The submucosa has the greatest tensile strength. The serosa is a good uh, matrix for fibroblasts and uh, healing. And then, of course, the interaction between these various layers is also important. Within minutes to hours of injury of the bowel, which typically occurs uh, at a time of anastomosis, the epithelial restitution occurs. Basically, the columnar cells lose their uh, polarity, they become flattened, and they migrate into the denuded layer. Within hours to days, then proliferation occurs to increase the pool of enterocytes, and then after that, maturation and differentiation occurs to form a full barrier. Now, these various processes can be disrupted by bacteria, and uh, this um, is, uh, has been um, become more aware, we've become more aware of this recently during, with the work of uh, Al Verdi. Briefly going through the uh, history of the various sutures, uh, even as far as back as 30,000 BC, eyed needles were described, and then uh, Galen first used catgut suture, which is basically the submucosa of the sheep or the horse gut, um, and then, you know, even the Egyptian times uh, sutures have been described for wounds. In 1887, the first uh, mass-produced sterile sutures, which is catgut, was uh, uh, described, was uh, brought into production by Johnson & Johnson, and then uh, George Merson uh, 
pretty much described the eyeless suture needles, which now allows us to perform anastomosis on the bowel uh, much simpler because of less trauma as a result of the eyeless noodles. Basically, this is a chronology of uh, the development of the sutures to its uh, current uh, time, um, uh, wherein uh, in the late 1990s, we now have topical adhesives that could be used. We're all familiar, uh, familiar with the suture techniques, uh, continuous or interrupted, side to side or end to end. And I know that um, at a later part of this uh, talk, uh, the various speakers will be addressing all of this. So I won't go into the details of this. When we think of uh, the various suture materials in terms of their properties for, uh, for um, bowel anastomosis, it is important to consider the intensity of the inflammation that the suture materials evoke. For example, CADGUT provides a very intense amount of inflammation, which is actually counterintuitively not good for healing because it reduces the tensile strength of the tissues. Going down the order, monofilament sutures are probably the best because they're inert and do not cause inflammation as much as CADGUT. Some suture materials such as CADGUT and Dexon, which were initially more available than the material we use nowadays, tend to degrade much faster in the presence of infection. And of course, uh, things such as durability and handling are other reasons that we have a preference over one. I would like to point out the work of Halstead in 1887, who basically showed to us that it's important to incorporate the submucosa. Um, he, uh, based on his work, CADGUT was developed. Um, any stitch that should be placed should pick up this layer per his suggestions. And uh, when a submucosa is not picked up with the suture bites, there's a greater chance of leak. This is a pictorial that also demonstrates that when a sutured anastomosis is performed, it's important to bear in mind the, the parallel architecture of the blood vessels close to the bowel wall uh, on the mesentery. Thus, as you can see, when you resect, you have watershed areas, and avoiding this with a, an oblique cut and placing sutures parallel to each other is important in, in the avoidance of a leak. In general, um, appositional sutured patterns are better Inversion reduces the lumen diameter, and also, while eversion can predispose to adhesion formation, a single-layered closure is usually better since a double-layered can cause luminal compromise, pure mucosal, submucosal apposition, problems with the blood supply, and prolonged healing time. As I previously discussed, um, based on the amount of inflammation caused, monofilament sutures are probably better. And in general, we do not want to use uh, permanent sutures because of the risk of foreign body formation. Now, going to the data, there is actually not a whole lot of data in the literature that supports each of these. Most, most of these are surgical dictums or principles that we tend to follow, and some of them are probably common sense uh, guidelines. But uh, they, there was uh, an attempt to look into these various aspects in the, in the early, in the, in the late 19, 1970s. Uh, this is an elegant study that was performed uh, in dogs. A uh, total of 90 anastomoses were tested in small intestine and the colon. Uh, single row sutures were placed, and uh, the different kind of suture materials were tested for in terms of anastomotic leak rates and bursting pressures. And basically, the authors concluded that non-absorbable polyester sutures were probably better based on this study. And when absorbable sutures were used, they found that Dexon would degrade preferentially in the colon, and hence they did not recommend uh, use of Dexon or of CADGAT. There was a, a different study in 1977 by Devani et al. who looked at suture materials in dogs in both in vitro and in vivo, and basically compared the dissolution times of CADGAT with other um, synthetic materials, healing materials, and they looked at the strength and healing of these various suture materials um, in the various parts of the gut. Once again, the findings uh, confirmed what we currently know, and, and presumably that's the reason we currently don't use cat gut, and most of us gravitate towards the delayed absorbable synthetic uh, materials. Cat gut tends to degrade very rapidly in proteolytic enzymes, whereas Dexon and Vicryl are rel relatively uh, uh, less degradable. Now, in terms of suture durability, um, yeah, I was able to find this one study that looked at um, the comparison of CADGAT versus synthetic absorbable materials in various uh, digestive juices. They were incubated, and uh, basically the authors looked at the time that would, it would take for each of these suture materials to disintegrate. 
Synthetic absorbers, which is, as you can see, uh, maintain strength for two weeks and uh, continue to maintain the strength for up to five to eight weeks. Um, in terms of uh, trials and randomized control studies comparing the various types of uh, anastomosis, uh, there was this um, trial that was uh, conducted in Germany by Hurl et al., looking at uh, anastomotic clique as a primary endpoint at four German centers. And uh, the objective of this study was basically to compare single layer versus double layered anastomosis. And um, after um, looking at the findings in a total of about 120 patients in each arm, there was no difference between the anastomotic leak rates. And even after a three month follow up, the relative well being of the patient in terms of bowel symptoms and quality of life was comparable, which indirectly suggested to the authors that there was no difference in the instance of uh, strictures. I'm only very briefly going to talk about staplers because nowadays I think the majority of surgeons use staplers much more than they would do sutures in terms of completing an anastomosis. Um, Humer Hulti in Hungary is uh, known as the father of uh, surgical stapling. His first uh, prototype stapler that he developed in 1908 uh, was actually extremely heavy. It was uh, 3.6 kgs and took two hours to assemble. Uh, subsequent to that, one of his colleagues also from Hungary developed a lighter, easier, less expensive device. And then in the 1950s, the Soviet Union uh, provided mass-produced staplers. From the uh, standpoint of view of the USA, Mark uh, Ravitch uh, actually attended a USSR conference in, at that time, the Soviet Union, and uh, subsequently was able to work with Lynn Hirsch to develop the first few staplers in this country that led to the creation of the auto suture, and subsequently this got bought out by Tyco and then Covidian. Just some data comparing uh, staple versus hands-on anastomosis. I thought I picked a few meta-analysis. This is basically a meta-analysis looking specifically at uh, hands-on versus stapled anastomosis for loop ileostomy closures. And as you can see, based on the delta, um, the findings suggest that perhaps because of the longer anastomosis created, the um, uh, stapled anastomosis have a lesser risk for obstruction. In terms of leak, as you can see based on the delta, there was no difference between the two groups. Similarly, in emergency surgery, um, there was no difference between hands-on versus stapled anastomosis in this other meta-analysis by Norman et al., published in 2015, in terms of the leak rates. Newer techniques, I think one of my colleagues may be referring to that in more detail, but uh, this goes to show that magnamosis is basically a magnetic compression device that was developed in 2017 uh, when the first human trial was performed. Basically, this consists of two magnetic rings that are placed within the lumen of the small of the bowel, and um, the thought process is that with the progressive necrosis, the, the, the anastomosis gets created. Uh, as you can, uh, as you may appreciate in the upper, in the x-ray on the top of the slide, uh, there are these two rings, which are the magnetic rings uh, created at the time of anastomosis, and typically after four to five weeks, the uh, rings tend to get extruded or, you know, get uh, passed into the lumen of the bowel and make their way out of the gastrointestinal tract. A handful of uh, studies have published the findings of, of this device and uh, the meta-analysis Pooling these studies once again shows there's no difference in terms of leak rates or in terms of uh, the risk for uh, strictures. So uh, to summarize, it would appear to me that uh, regardless of the kind of suture material um, you know, or uh, stapler or other devices used, patients uh, likely get uh, similar results in terms of anastomotic leak rates, suggesting that surgical technique and perhaps the microbiome have a, a greater um, influence than the actual suture material. In general, however, most uh, su uh, suture material uh, should incorporate the submucosa and anastomosis. A single layer anastomosis is probably better than a double layer anastomosis. Um, abs when absorbable materials are used, which is preferable, the delayed synthetic material should be used based on the data that I've examined. Uh, results with staplers are probably just as good as with sutures. Newer methods and devices are currently available. And of course, we need to bear in mind the role of bacteria. I think greater work on this in the future will hopefully reduce our anastomotic leak rates even further. Thank you very much for uh, allowing me to talk today.